Good evening, everyone. How are you doing? Tonight, we're going to do our third session now, training for new agents. I hate to call it just new agents, though, because that's why I keep on reminding everybody, even if you're uh, I've been doing this for a number of years or a few years and you, you know, you know what you're doing. They very often change the forms. They change things on our forms. Um, like, you know, our receipt of funds record we went into recently. I know everybody was going, did they change the form? They're constantly changing things. So I always encourage everybody to join any kind of session that they can for training because sometimes you pick up a tip or a trick that you never knew to begin with and uh, then you you go, oh, look, I learned something tonight. So, um, But I, I guess it's a focus on training for new agents in the sense that it is back to basics, um, back to basic things that we need to learn how to do. So I have special requests tonight to tell me how to load a listing. Okay, so I'm going to start off by going into the system and showing you a couple different ways we can load a listing. Um, the first thing you should be doing is getting all your paperwork in order. So you need your MLS data sheet. Here, I'll, I'm going to open up one that I got here that I'm going to use as an example, and we'll tell you all the paperwork that you need. So first, you're going to log into your system. You're going to go into Stratus. Let me just get my mouse going again here. So generally for a listing, let me find the most, one of the recent listings that I've done here. We'll say Harvest Moon. Is this all the listing things? Seller's Direction, Harvest Moon, edited. Let's see. Okay. So generally you're going to look, oh, I'm in AuthentiSign. One second. I'm going to go into my kit. It's better for you guys to see all the different forms. So for a Harvest Moon, for instance, the one that I listed, you see you have your MLS data sheet, so you need that. You have your listing agreement with your client, okay? I canceled and I relisted this today, so I have a cancellation form I threw in there. Um, I put a seller's direction of property and offers because I decided to hold offers for a certain date. Um, your FinTrack, your individual identification record, and you're working with a realtor. But it's easy because I'm just going to give a quick, quick overview. If you guys haven't already seen it, when you go in here to create the kits, I have templates in there that you guys can choose from. I don't want to focus on it too much because we did training before about it, but anybody who missed it, when you come to create a template, a new kit, sorry, for a listing or something like that, you're going to go in here and you're going to choose what you want. So, you know, in this case, it was a, a freehold sale listing. But you have freehold for lease listing, you have condo for sale listing, condo for lease listing, all the kits in there that you need to um, use for listings, okay? So where do you go and add your listings, okay? So you go to search properties here, you'll see that there's this add edit on the left-hand side of your screen, right? So we're just going to go into that and see what that looks like. Now, if you guys have tried this button, it probably doesn't work for a lot of you. Um, uh, we don't give everybody, unless they get a little bit of training on it, the, the chance to necessarily load their listing because you're liable for all the information you put on there for any mistakes you make listing it. Um, so it's a good thing to kind of vet what you guys are putting up there. You have to make sure the schedules are loaded um, and all of that stuff, which I'll go over a little bit. But this is a good preliminary. Uh, and you guys can um, probably try to start walking through it after this. So once you click Add Edit, you come to this screen and we want to add a listing. That's what we're focusing on today. So let's pretend we're doing residential. OK, and we're going to do for sale. OK, it's just like when you go to search, you have to choose what type of property you're listing and make sure that you're checking your geo warehouse, um, because if you mislist something, it's a serious offense on Treb. Uh, you can get fined. So if you have like a parcel of tied land and you list it as a condo or vice versa, you have to make sure you put it in the proper place. If you're unsure, let me know. But you should be going into Geo Warehouse and MPAC and checking those things to make sure it, whether it's a condo or a freehold listing, if you're unsure, right? So residential freehold for sale, continue. And we come into this whole big thing. It's basically all the information that's on our MLS data sheet, but we every it looks a little, like a little bit different format than our MLS data sheet. And everything with a blue asterisk beside it is something that you have to fill out. It's a mandatory field. Okay. So we're just going to get a pretend listing right now. Okay. So let's just make up the information as we go, but we're going to go and I'm going to show you guys a few things. So you're going to have to pick the, the city, the district. So I'll do EO4 around the office. 
and we're in Dorset Park, okay? If you're not sure where your listing is, remember I was showing you guys a couple trainings ago how to use the TREB map, really good interactive map. I can click on it once I get out of this to refresh you guys, but I just wanna to stick to this form for now. And then you've given the address, one, two, three, say Main Street, right? And in the pull down menu, you put street. Make sure you don't put street there where I put main because I see a lot of listings where it says one, two, three, main street, street, right? <laughs> you just have to put the, the whatever the abbreviation for the street is um, in the pull down menu. You don't put it beside the, the name of the street, okay? Postal code, whatever it is, M1, M2, J5, pretty straightforward stuff, okay? Fronting on, I go back and back and back to this fronting on. Does anybody um, not know, I guess I shouldn't call everybody out. I'm just gonna show you how to pick the fronting on because um, I get asked this a lot or I see it mislisted a lot. If you see um, online that I've edited your listing, I don't know if you guys know how to go and look at the history. Very often in the morning I come and I look at new listings and if I find something that I think is incorrect or whatever, you might see that Christine's edited your listing. If you ever see that, that's it's the only reason if you have a question of why I edit it, I'd be happy to share it with you, but I'm just going to make sure that your, your information is correct when you're loading your own listing. Um, so we're going to say it's fronting on the east. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull up the office real quick on Google Maps, and I'm just going to go over a quick how you pick what the fronting is when you're loading your listing, okay? Because this is an information that's readily available. You're going to have to know how to do this, okay? So we'll do 1286 Kennedy Road where the office is, okay? All right, so it as we all know, we're on the west side of the road, right? Our front of our office faces the west side of the road. We're fronting on the west side of the road. But very often people get very confused and they, they wonder how we come up on that because they're like, no, but my property's facing east. But really the frontage is where the front of the property is facing. So we're on the west side of the road, okay? If you guys are confused about that, I can always go over it again, but I'm just kind of zipping through things that isn't our focus today. Now, let me find where my screen was. Where was I loading that listing? I got too many things open. Okay. So fronting on the east side of the road. Okay. Legal description. I want to pause here for a minute. So we all know how to check legal description. We can go into Geo Warehouse or we can go into MPAC and find the legal description. Okay. If you have a legal description that does not fit in this box. It is very important to put C schedule D or B or whatever it is you're putting or put part of it. And in the broker remarks, you can put, you know, asterisks and then put the rest of the legal description. Just because it doesn't fit here, it's not a, an excuse to not put the full legal description. So make sure if you're getting one of those really, really long ones, um, that you you put it in here, like for instance, my one of my listings on Tarosa um, has a really long legal description. It's so long, I don't know why. I just added a Schedule D to my listing, right? Um, so I'm making sure everybody adds Schedule D with their offers. The lot front and the lot depth. Again, be very careful. Don't go by old listings. I know we probably look up, looked up when our client bought it three or four years ago, and we're going a lot of the details off of that listing. But for lot front and lot depth, again, we should be checking Geo Warehouse. We should be um, checking MPAC for these kind of things because that's what we have to go through. We have to show that we did our due diligence, okay? Because these are things that they don't come, they they don't um, uh, take lightly. If Trevor Rico has a complaint about you, and your information is different than what's on uh, Geo Warehouse or M or MPAC, they're going to come down hard on you because they're going to say, how did you verify this information is true? You can't say, oh, my, my client told me. Well, your client's not the professional, right? We're, this is our field. This is our real estate field, right? They come down harder on us because this is what we should know. So we have to prove to them that, oh, you know, I got the information from here. And it has to be a reliable source like Geo Warehouse or MPAC, right? So check your lot front check your lot death. I have a lot of clients who tell me, why are you putting zero? It's in a regular lot. I, it's going to sound bad, you know, and it's 111 feet deep. And I always explain to them, yeah, but you could get into trouble later because when people want to figure out what the lot size is, you know, if it's 50 by 150, the square feet is going to be very much different if that's a triangular lot or sorry, rectangular lot than if that's in a regular triangle lot. I cannot put 111 because what they're going to do is they're going to go 50 by 111 and get the wrong uh, square footage for your lot, 
right? And you're liable for that information at the end. I know it makes your, your listing look better if you put 111 instead of zero, but it's the incorrect way to do it. And you can be, so for instance, going forward, say somebody purchased a lot of the information that um, you put in the listing and you put 50 by 111 and it was in a regular lot. They've assumed that it's a rectangle lot because you've put the two dimensions in and now they've purchased the property in their firm and they turn around to go get permits from the city and realize that they can't do it because the square footage simply isn't there for the lot size so now they can't build the house that they want on it they can turn around and sue you and you can be liable for damages so very important much better than having a listing that looks better with 111 when that's the incorrect information right um so a lot of regularities. So this is where if you put a zero here, you can let the public know it's an irregular lot. That's why that's a zero or that's why that looks like a weird number, right? The zoning, you don't have to put, as you see, there's no blue asterisk beside it. So it's not a mandatory field. I would stay away from putting zoning on it necessarily, unless you're a thousand percent sure you have some kind of city document. Um, the direction and cross streets, you can put whatever you want. You can put something main, you can put something um, more, if it's it's more favorable to be on this side of the road than that side of the road, and you wanna put something on this side of the road instead of a main street, it's totally up to you. Hang on one second, I just wanna, there we go. Okay, so um, list price. List price is whatever you want it to be. Every single time you make a change, it's going to show. So be careful with these kind of fields because these kind of fields will bring up status changes on your listing. So I'm guilty of it. I've put in, you know, a million instead of a hundred thousand, for instance, you know, I put in an extra zero or one zero less. I meant to list it for a million, one zero less. Once you hit submit and your listing is loaded, even at two seconds after that listing is loaded, you go and you go, oh shoot, I forgot a zero. You gotta go back and add that zero. It's gonna show as a price change on your listing, which you don't necessarily want because not everybody checks the history and you're gonna get all those calls going, why'd you change the price? Was your listing not selling? You'll get those kind of questions, right? Taxes, taxes cannot be zero. Even if your client cannot find their tax document, Another thing that I see a lot of tribe complaints about, they'll immediately send the off, uh, the office an email saying that it has to be uh, fixed, right? It has to be amended. Um, generally, when you get to about four, five, six months into the year, they won't accept the previous year. So right now we're okay to put a 2021 20, if our client has it readily available. If they have 2022, even better. Definitely not 2020 at this point. And I think, you know, generally, I, there's not a hard and fast rule, but generally after about the halfway point, you'll see that they'll want a 2022 tax thing. Treb might um, nudge you via email to put a 2022 or a more updated tax amount, right? The contract commencement, again, be very careful. So if I want to put tomorrow's date when I'm loading this, so I just want to show you this real quick. It'll come up red. So say I'm working on this tonight, but I'm not planning on loading it until the morning. It's okay if that's red right now. Okay. You don't want to go, oh, it's red and it's not liking the field I put in there because your contract signed for that, right? If you go in here and you put today's date and you load it in the morning after midnight, it's going to show that you've already been one day on the market. Okay. Even if you never loaded it, it was never live, nobody saw it, it's still going to show up on your listing as one day on the market. So if that's something that's important for you because your marketing material says sold in one day or sold in two days over asking, just be careful with those dates. It has to be what your MLS, uh, your MLS data sheet in your listing agreement says, whatever your clients agreed. So my client can sign today that they want to load on Monday. I can't load on Wednesday. I have to load on Monday according to our document, right? And then every now and then you want to hit a little save up here in the corner because I always tell people Stratus has killed me too many times to not save a thousand times to make sure that it's okay. The expiry date, you put whatever your expiry date is on the contract, okay? Possession date. So the funny thing is, is that it's either or. You don't have to put both the possession date and the possession remarks. So possession date is your, if your client actually has a date. So their closing is March 15th. I need to put March 15th in here, okay? Because um, that's going to tell the public, don't send me offers for June closing. They're going to send me this incredible offer, but I can't you know, close until June. Now my client has to find somewhere to live for three months, right? If they don't care and they're flexible, you could put in here in the possession marks. See, it's going to tell me I have nothing in uh, possession date now because I deleted it. 
I could put TBD to be determined. I could put TBA to be announced. I could put flexible. You could put basically whatever you want in here, right? Or if you don't have an exact date, but they'd like a couple months to move, I could put mid-May, just sort of give them a direction, the buyer's agent a direction on what kind of date I'm looking at uh, for closing for my clients, okay? The next thing is the holdover days. So most of the time we're putting that 90 or 120 day holdover, okay? The seller or landlord name, so that'd be whoever's on title, whoever's selling the property, okay? Mortgage comments, a lot of people put treat as clear. It's not a mandatory field. You don't have to put anything here, okay? And then we go through the information about the property, okay? So in this case, we're gonna say that we have a detached home. The style is a two-story. Oops, I just picked two and a half. Two-story, it's not a link, okay? And the exterior is brick. You can pick up to two on here though. So say it's brick and concrete, okay? But the max it'll let you pick on this field is two, okay? Parcel of tied land, if it is, then you have to click that yes. It's not a mandatory field though. I don't know why they don't make it. Oh, I guess because it's only a yes there. You don't have to pick no. The garage type, I'm just making this up, you know, as we go along, I'm just having an imaginary property in my head, but it's all basic stuff that we've been like dealing with. So I'm going to say it's an attached two car garage. So this is another part where we get tripped up and the driveway is private. Okay. And the driveway has four spaces in it, right? So what are my total number of parking spaces? It's always the garage plus the driveway. So, right. So I have two and four, so the total parking is six. I'm just delineating where those parking spaces are, okay? Does it have a pool? Let's say no, no pool, right? The water, most of what we're selling for resale, Scarborough and Toronto is gonna be municipal, okay? So municipally fed water, meaning there's pipelines coming directly to our house and we're on a regular sewer system where it drains out to the sewers ourselves. It's not septic or holding tanks or anything, right? If you're not sure and you're dealing with a property a little bit more remote, you guys can always bounce it off of me and I'll help you figure it out. Special designation. So this is if you're selling a heritage property or if it's a land lease or whatever, most of the time it's unknown. Again, we're re doing resale Toronto. 99% of the time it's unknown, right? And then we go into other structures, property features, all of this stuff. As you see, none of it has a blue asterisk around it. Again, none of this for water body type, shoreline, shoreline allowance. You don't need all of this unless you want to put it in about your property, okay? So the next field, anybody have any questions so far on that part before I get down to the room breakdowns and stuff like that? No? Okay. So then the next field you're gonna go into is how many rooms? So how do we figure out how many rooms in a house? This is confusing to a lot of people too, I find. So you're usually looking at kitchen, living, dining right on the main floor kitchen living dining so there, sometimes there might be a family room so that make it four and say let, this is a four bedroom upstairs so i'm going to go four rooms on the main floor and four up so i'm coming to eight and now say i have a two bedroom basement apartment okay what i'm going to do is the bed, basement bedroom apartment has a living dining combined and a kitchen okay so i have eight upstairs and downstairs, I said the two bedroom plus living, dining, kitchen is, uh, sorry, five. Okay. If that confuses anybody, let me know. Because now the breakdown, I have to break down what's the eight plus five, right? I'm going to go four bedrooms up plus two. Plus two is anything that's not on the floor where all the bedrooms are upstairs or if it's a bungalow on the main floor. Um, so even if you had say a room on the main floor that um, they're using as a bedroom. If you want to list it as a bedroom, you'd have to list it as a plus one. If you want to list it as an office, you could list it like that instead. Okay. And we're going to say that this has one plus one kitchen. Just because it has two kitchens, you do not put two here because there's not two on the main floor of the house. Plus one generally means it's in a separate location, right? And we're going to give this place three washrooms. Okay. So I'm gonna give it one washroom on the main floor that's a powder room. So it has two pieces and I'm gonna put it on the main floor. 
And then I'm going to give it one four uh, piece on the upper floor because it has a toilet, a sink, a tub, and a shower, four pieces on the second floor. And then I'm going to give it a one three piece in the basement apartment because it has a toilet, a sink, and a shower. Okay. And that's going to be on the lower level. Okay. You have to itemize what level they're on if they're on different levels. So if you have two four-piece bathrooms, I couldn't put two four-piece here. I'd still have to put one four-piece on the second and one four-piece on the lower. Imagine there were two four-piece, right? And then family room. Family room is another one that goes uh, back and forth, back and forth. A family room is a separate room from your living room on the main floor of the house, okay? So um, rec room generally in the basement, family room, so I would have a living, a dining, and a separate room that's a family room. That's why they make this a whole designated thing on its own, because not a lot of houses have them, right? So we're just gonna say this one has yes. And the basement, here's another spot where we can pick two categories. So I'm gonna say, because I made an apartment in this one, that it is a finished basement, and it's got a separate entrance because I want to appeal to those people that need that income coming in from their basement, right? Finish separate entrance, very popular, right? And I'm going to say that we do not have a stove uh, or a fireplace stove. And again, dealing in the city, most of the time we're dealing with gas, forced air, older Scarborough, sometimes we're dealing with electric, right? Um, it's not that often you see oil anymore, but it's not impossible. If you're selling East York, you can see oil tanks and all, uh, everything still. Propane is generally out of the city where there's no pipeline for natural gas, right? Some houses have solar. I don't see any that are 100% solar though. Uh, and then of course, again, rural, we'd be dealing with some wood, but I'm just gonna say that this one is gas. And most of the time it's gas forced air, but it can be different, different things. If you're confused by the heating system in the home, again, come talk to me. I had one the other day that was, um, uh, it was a little bit Northern, but it was propane. Um, and they thought, oh, well, I don't understand because they said, it, no, it was natural gas, natural gas, that's what it was. But they, it looked like baseboard heating on the floor. And so the, the agent was confused and they said, oh, I don't understand because it looks like baseboard. My client's saying, I don't want baseboard electric heating. But what it was, it was a gas system that fed um, the radiant heat. And those boards along kind of look like the electric um, baseboards you get, but it was actually a, a gas fed system. It just wasn't forced air, right? They didn't have the duct work in the house. So, and then AC, most houses have central air again, but they could have a window unit, a wall unit, you know, it depends or none, right? But most of it's central air that we're dealing with in the city, okay? So then you could put anything here. I don't, we'll do a quick save, sorry, as a habit. Uh, I generally never fill out the UFI because I don't wanna be responsible. Even if my client tells me, no, there's no UFI in my house, they don't really necessarily know what's behind their walls. Uh, central VAC is here, if they have it. Laundry level, you could put, like some people really like main or upper level, right? Um, and if there's an elevator or a lift, not very many houses have that again. And then here is where you put in the room descriptions. So basically you're just gonna itemize. Now remember here, I had put eight plus five. So generally I'm not, I'm gonna run out of room. So I'm gonna try and pick what I think are the most important rooms here, right? Um, but I'm gonna start off with putting everything I have on the main floor. So the main, I'm going to come here. I'm just going to do like one or two of these to show you guys real quick. The kitchen, and I'm going to say the kitchen is 3.47. Everything has to be in meters, okay? Uh, and don't ask me why a lot of clients are like, oh, uh, sorry, a lot of agents are like, I don't want it in meters. I want it in feet because of what the public sees. But if you guys ever play around on realtor.ca, even though you enter um, in metric, the public sees it in feet. And they have the choice to toggle between the feet and uh, meters on the realtor.ca site. But Treb wants us to enter in meters. So that's what we do, just out of habit. So I'm gonna say 3.47 meters by 5.25 meters, okay? And then I always encourage people to use these. I find not a lot of people use them to really, you know, they put basic stuff in here. There's lots of good descriptions, you know what I mean? So for a kitchen, I might want to put that, you know, they just upgraded to quartz. So they have quartz in here. I just passed Q, right? I'm going to say quartz countertop. 
and they put in porcelain floors, for instance. Uh, porcelain floor. And then this kitchen has a lovely walkout. You can also start typing. Walk out to the garden in the backyard. Love it. Okay. Enhance your listing by giving people a nice feel before they come to the house and draw them in off your listing to come and see it. If you haven't, if you're not getting a lot of showings, it's usually either your price point or how you um, put the uh, listing up, how you're showcasing it online. Um, and I have another training I'm gonna do that's similar to this, but it focuses more on how to load a good listing. Um, and uh, another one I don't wanna do with you guys after this on pricing strategies, right? Um, but generally it's because you really have to take a little time and put in a nice um, description about here, um, what's in the property, what are the features here, right? Here's a section I want to focus on a little bit. So remarks for clients, you guys are free to write whatever you want there. Nice description, beautiful house, solid brick home, sought after community of whatever. Um, it's, you know, separate entrance basement. Um, could be great, you know, in-law suite, whatever you want to put there, okay? In your extras, you want to itemize what's included, okay? So I might put, you know, two fridges, two stoves, washer and dryer, uh, all electrical light fixtures, broad loom were laid, uh, all window coverings. Uh, but, you know, say my my um, seller wants to keep her chandelier because it was a wedding present. So I might say, please exclude chandelier in dining room, over dining room table, right? Remarks for brokerage. So this is what, when the public goes on, they cannot see these instructions. Only agent to agent can see them when we log into our stratus, Okay. So you have to be very careful because they provided this section, you have to be very careful not to use the remarks for clients or the extra section to say things that are broker to broker, okay? Treb will call you on it. I've seen the emails and you will have to fix it and they'll, they'll, they'll threaten to fine you for it. So you can't put in the extras, please call listing agent and put your number in there, okay? Because you're, according to Treb, encouraging the public to only call you right? If you want those in your instructions because you have something to declare or to disclose or to say to the agents before they're showing, you can put please call listing agent in the remarks for brokerage. You cannot put it anywhere where the public can see it, okay? Um, things like please include, include schedule B and C, 801, uh, you know, different things like that. You can't put those for the public. They're broker instructions. Treb will make you remove them from your remarks for clients or extras. And I know a lot of people say to me when I say stuff to like, like this to them that, oh, I see a thousand listings online that have the same thing. And, you know, people always put please call listing agent in the remarks for clients or extras. There's thousands and thousands of listings, as we know, that go all the time. And Treb never, ever checks every single one of them. But I can tell you that if someone points it out or if they happen across it, they will complain about it. So I'm just telling you guys the basic rules. So stay, stay away from it. <clears throat> Here you put the listing brokerage phone number and the listing brokerage fax, pretty straightforward. The drop down menu, you know, you can pick your name. If you're working on the listing with somebody, you can put your second salesperson in. Here, you can put your own phone number, you can put the office number. I see a lot of agents put their office numbers. I call them secret agents because I like to get the calls for my, my listings, right? Um, even if it's a popular listing and I'm getting bombarded, but it's totally by choice what you wanna do there, okay? You don't have to put your own. The commission for co-op brokerage, you're gonna put whatever your client signed on your listing agreement. So 2.5, 2.25, whatever the case may be. And the seller property information statement. So this is always a no for me. I never get my client to, to put it out. It never existed before. And it came into play so we could tell the buyers it was a, everyone thought it was a great idea when it first came into play because it never used to exist, right? And it came into play because Treb, for some reason, thought it was a great idea. Let's have this form, or Oria, I should say, let's have this form, get a seller property information statement. We'll get our client to fill out furnace is 15 years old, in good condition. AC is this, that, you know, and it would get you to say no leak problems or whatever the case. I haven't seen the report, honestly, in a long time. It's in our forms. If you look in web forms, you'll find it. Um, we, a lot of people started filling them out. They were like, this is great because then you don't get the thousand calls asking you, hey, what's the age of this? What's the age when was the roof last done and all this stuff. But then it started working against the buyer 
um, where buyers said this was in the seller property information statement. And now I realize that the, uh, the roof isn't 12 years old, it's 15 years old and it needs to be redone and you lied and now you're paying for my roof, right? So again, I'm not directing, you guys use it as you wish. If you wanna put yes here and put a seller property information statement, just be cautious of the information you put in it and make sure it's 100% accurate, right? I generally put no though. Uh, the next thing I get asked a lot is about all of these, distribute to DDX, IDF, DDF, IDX, permission to contact listing brokerage, distribute to internet portals, and distri distribute address on internet. Okay, so we'll start with this one first. Distribute to DDF, IDX. What is that? Okay, this you have to explain to your clients because it's on the MLS data form. You have to explain to them that that is the portal that Zillow, Zolo, you know, uh, House Sigma, um, even agents who want to pay have sub for a subscription to the Toronto Real Estate Board. So they subscribe to this portal. And once they do, they don't have to go and physically load listings. They have one of those websites such as funnel the all, everything that gets loaded on Treb gets loaded on their website. Okay. So it basically goes out into the whole internet world. It's not only MLS that your client is signing. You know, at the top of the listing agreement where it says sign MLS or exclusive, they're choosing to be on MLS. And down here, they're choosing now from MLS. MLS is going to push it out to DDF, whoever subscribes to DDF and IDX, and they have to acknowledge that, okay? I've had clients be mad and go, I, you know, I don't want my house on Zillow and I saw it on there and you know how they do the estimate house price and it's estimating lower than I want, right? If your client comes back to you, this is what you have to click no to then. And say, so, oh, I'm sorry, when you signed the form, you know, you signed yes to DDF, IDX, I'll go and I'll change that in your listing and you have to go change it to no. Then it'll take it off all of those websites, those external websites, okay? The permission to contact listing brokerage to advertise. This has been such a convoluted thing. So it used to just say permission to advertise and you could say yes or no. But then people started to say, okay, I said yes, but I don't like the way that they advertise my listing. Okay. So permission to contact listing brokerage. That's the saying, yeah, it's kind of like a do not call list. Okay. Agent to agent. Yeah. You can call me or email me to ask me if I can, you can advertise my listing or no, don't call me and bug me. I don't want you advertising this listing. So if, say for instance, I always say yes. Okay, let me go back here for a second. I always say yes, because I'm like, oh, you know, I really want the max exposure because I want lots of people to come through the door, advertise as much as you want, send out your flyers. I don't care. A lot of agents don't like it because they're like, oh, I don't want other agents. I don't want other agents looking like they're popular and they're getting more listings and it's not even theirs. It's my listing. I look at it as good exposure. Okay. I would say no, if I got an area in a really hot pocket that's really hard to get into and there's not a lot of turnover. So say I got into, you know, the, the, the $20 million homes in EO8 or the bridal path, I, I would definitely put a no on this one, right? Because you might want to really hoard that market. But if it's in your everyday resale, Scarborough, Toronto, bungalow, I always say there's tons and tons of sales to go around. I feel like it help, it's helpful. But it's totally, again, a whole, this is a you, whether how you feel as a listing agent, right? Distribute to internet portals. So again, that's going to be funneling into, I'm, I'm up on Stratus, but not just by search. I'm going to be popped up on realtor.ca. And is my address going to appear? Yeah or no? Or you just want it to say Marco Manel's near home, right? So those are all things your client has to agree to. Um, oh, 712 already. Okay, I'm going to hurry along quickly and just finish this off because there's something I wanted to show you guys that's fantastic after showing you all of this because this is really long winded, right? Virtual tour. You have to put a virtual tour in that is not branded. You can, you're welcome to have a branded virtual tour. So if you're on your Facebook or your website, you can put your virtual tour up there or your YouTube channel with all your logos and everything. Treb does not allow you to advertise on your virtual tour. And again, you can put different things on here, your sales brochure, if you have additional pictures, say Tribal only allows you 40, but it's a huge, big palatial home, and you have 100, you can add a URL to a link to other pictures, feature sheet, map location, soundbite, whatever you want, you can add lots of fun things you can add to your listing. Here again is where you load your, your pictures, so again, it's a quick, you click on it, you're going to browse on your computer, right, you pick your picture, so here's my Harvest Moon pictures. I'm going to click on one, 
and then I'm going to upload it. You can put a description here if you want, but if you don't know what it is, like I just loaded that, I don't know what it is. I'm going to load it up and see. Oh, I see it's the front of the house. So now I can put front view. Okay. <clears throat> Here's where you put your attachments. So our office has schedule B and schedule C right now. <clears throat> Pardon me. We also have the COVID disclosure that we're all loading on our listings. If you don't have a copy of these and you're loading your listing, just ask me at the front desk. We'll provide you with it. And then map, which is confirming your, where you are on the map. Okay. And here, the red at the bottom is going to tell you what you're messing up. So remember the contract commencement. I said I put tomorrow's date and it's not tomorrow yet. It's just letting me know that's wrong. And the possession remarks and possession data was messing around with that. It's letting me know that they're a little messed up there. But other than that, that is the whole quick, quick, how you load a listing. And it seems like it's a lot, right? And before we used to have to do all this work, plus our paperwork, I'm going to show you guys the most fantastic thing that they ever put in the system. I was so excited when they started doing it. I don't know, about five, four or five years ago. It is a lifesaver. It's a lifesaver for the front desk. And it's a reason I really want to train you guys on how to load your listings properly, because it is so pointless to do double the work and I'll show you why. Okay, so I'm just gonna go out of this for a minute and I'm gonna go into my homepage and I purposely left a listing that I'm going to load next week. It's just it's just a rental, but I purposely left it because I, I love this button and I thought, oh, I'm doing a training soon. So I quickly put my information to get, I normally wouldn't work on my listing this early and do it next week sometime, but I made sure I went and I did it there so I could show you guys this amazing button. So this is a lease listing I'm working on for a condo. They don't want me to load it yet because we're not ready to rent till mid-April or something like that, right? So I'm going to take my time with it, but I got ahead of the game and I did it so I could show you guys. So when you go and you are going into your listing appointment and you're getting your MLS data sheets and your listing agreement signed and stuff like that, you have to go and fill out your MLS data sheet. Does everybody have the share? I always get, a I'm going to come out for a second and come back in while that's loading. Sometimes when I switch screens a lot, um, I uh, lose you guys in the share. So just want to make sure you guys have it there. Okay. So everybody sees MLS data forms all the time, right? And we're filling them out. We're getting our clients to sign them. So again, we're going to go through all that information we just did in that add edit listing on Stratus, but here's our paperwork. So this is the first point of contact that we're taking, right? And we're gonna add, get all that information that we had that we just went over that just took me 40 minutes to go over. Area, municipality, community, street number. This one in, in this case is a condo. So I have to put the management, condo core information, cross streets, everything we just talked about. Ex possession date, see, we're not going to like April 15th, right? How many parking? What's the exterior? Does it come with a locker? All this, you know, square footage of the building, whatever, or the unit. All of this information that we just went over, okay? And we've taken the time to do it in our MLS data sheet now. So at this point, a lot of agents would either hand it to the front desk, which is fine, full service brokerage here, but it's, it's so double the work because after you've done this, if you're loading it or the front desk is loading it, um, the, the difference is, is that if you're loading it, you have your kit that you've created. All you have to do is go to your box here and see where it says upload listing. You're going to click on that box. And the reason I saved it for this training is because you can only do it once. Once you come back in here, that button disappears. Okay. I'm just going to wait a minute while it does your thing. It says upload successful. Perfect. Stratus is thinking and thinking. It's taking a long time. Actually, while it's thinking, I can probably go to the other screen and it'll show it. So now when I go to my ad edit, okay, I go to my drafts and you see how I have the 123 Main Street I was using for you guys, that draft that I was saving. But now I have this Doris one that I just pushed, okay? So Doris, continue. Okay, now look at what happened. Everything I put in my MLS data sheet to get my client to sign is automatically filled in here. Okay, absolutely everything. So it just saved me a whole bunch of time. Okay, the only things I can't push are the pictures. Okay, the attachments, you know, my, my virtual tour if I have one. 
right? I haven't fully finished this listing, so it looks like it's a little more blank than it is, but if you had filled out your description, if you had filled out the descriptions for each room, they would push as well to the listing. But look at that, the whole thing is filled out. So you've already taken the time to do it on your MLS data sheet. You don't have to hand it to the front desk. It's the push of one button to load your listing, okay? So if you guys practice this, you get good at it. Like I say, when you first go into your ad edit, if you've never loaded a listing before, you're not gonna have the permission from the office, only because it's to protect you guys because Treb sends a thousand complaints about every little detail that you do wrong on your listing. They're really picky. Um, so generally we like to load them. And like I say, if you see me editing something in your listing, it's because I've vetted it. Like in the morning, I kind of sit and have my coffee when I first come in and I look at your guys' listings to make sure that a few listings that have been loaded haven't had too much in it um and don't have anything that's totally incorrect so um yeah but other than that i think that that is a, a beautiful way they added because before we used to have do double the work do our mls data sheets and then go and load our our listings separately and it's basically entering the same information twice which is a bit of a pain so really smart button they added there super excited about that okay let me just stop the share here and check you guys and see how you're doing I got so many screens open here on my side. So, all right, everybody doing well. Have you guys tried loading your listing on your own yet? Did I lose you on anything you want me to cover again quickly before we finish up this evening or? Like I say, if you guys have a, a loading to list, do your kit, do your MLS data sheet, come into the office and we'll get you, open up the permission for you and we'll push it and make sure that you guys get the first run through with somebody watching you there and we'll make sure that everything's okay. Um, if you have the permission and you're still kind of muddling through something, call me, um, text me, Zoom call, whatever, we can do screenshots, whatever you need to do to help you if you guys are stuck. Um, and like I say, this, all the schedules that need to be added can get you can get from front desk or just shoot me a text and I'll send them to you. You guys got to bring in lots of listings now that you know how to load them, right? We're coming into listing season. So hopefully you guys will get lots and lots of listings and we'll be loading like crazy, right? Everybody good? Any questions this evening? No, everybody good? Okay. Awesome. Everybody stay safe that I see. I'm looking at the window of the front here and it's coming down and coming down and coming down kind of at a constant. So hopefully, you know, it doesn't kill us too much. I thought the rain nicely washed everything away, but it's okay. I don't mind the snow, but everybody be safe. Enjoy a nice long weekend, right? We have family day weekend this weekend. So everybody enjoy, have a good time with your families and I will see you all next week. Next week training on Tuesday. I just want to mention real quick, Everybody try and attend because they're going to be doing the Remax back office. I got head office to come and they're going to be going over the whole design center. So all the uh, tools we can use back there to design stuff for our listings. So definitely join Tuesday morning. All right. Thank no you, problem. Christine. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. No Thank problem. You. Anytime, anytime. Enjoy your evening. Safe, try yes. safe. Yes, you too. You too. Talk Thank to you soon, you. guys. Okay, bye. Bye-bye.